I argue that Scotty Scheffler is not a quote-unquote winner. I'm not convinced he is in the echelon of some of the great killers out there. Scotty Scheffler comes to the Players' Championship defending his title, but we'd be remiss if we didn't address Benny Betts and what he said last week about Scotty Scheffler. Cue up the one-shot Benny monologue time. All right, Scotty, I've got to say, I'm sorry, mate. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said you weren't a closer. I said you didn't have a killer instinct. I said you only win by paper cuts, getting out in front and killing the field. But I sat there and watched you fall five behind on Friday down there at API. I was peacocking around the place. You should have seen me. I was like, I told you he's going to fold again. And then you've come back like an absolute champion. You've destroyed everyone on Sunday. You are a killer, mate. Well done. And you come here now as the defending champion and very short price favourite. Can anyone beat him, boys? Not if he's putting like he did on Sunday. Uh, if, if he is leading the field in strokes game putting, he's going to uh, collect a lot of hardware. We've talked for weeks and weeks about Scotty Scheffler and the notion of, of what does he have to do on the greens. And it's, he doesn't have to lead the field. He has to be maybe 40th or 50th on the greens and just not shoot himself out of it by missing three and four footers. Man, Ben, he did that in a big way. Uh, you're not the only one here. I will say I was also fading Scheffler until he could show that he was able to putt. He did that on Sunday. I will fade no more. Although, Chris, I'm not sure that I'm buying him at plus 550. Such a short, such a short price favorite for such a volatile course and a stack field. Excellent way to start the round table. All four of us in person here on the lawn at TPC Sawgrass. Chris Brees, Will Gray, Ben Everill, and Matt Davecchio. Matt chomping at the bit <laughs> to tell Ben that he was dead wrong. Yeah, I mean, Ben, he kind of knew it was coming. You know, Scotty Scheffler is number one in the world, and I would argue his putting turned around on Saturday. He had a really bad front nine. That back nine, he started putting. So we kind of knew it was coming in the final round. We thought it was happening. It happened, and Scotty showed everyone why he's number one in the world. Everyone kept saying if Scotty makes a few putts yep. he will win but guess what he wasn't making them he, he wasn't did. making them as soon as he did he destroyed the field so that's it comes down to that again historically over the last four years which is what I count because obviously we've moved back to March and we had one of those years really bad weather but you haven't had to be awesome at putting you've just sort of had to be in the top 40 top 50 putting he can do that here I'm like you though, I don't know about the plus 550. He's off in the afternoon, which would make me wait at least to right before he tees off. You might get it out to plus 600, plus 650 if someone goes low, like I'm in Wu Lee in the morning. We'll see what happens, but yeah, maybe just hold until he's about to start. Scotty's got one problem. He has an afternoon tea time on Thursday. And look, some people want to make a big deal of this. Others want to say pump the brakes. Maybe not so much. 15 of the last 17 winners, guys, have been the early late tea time wave. What does that mean? It means you tee off early Thursday morning and late Friday afternoon. Will, you think it's a big deal? Yeah, I mean, listen, I was here for those you know wins in 2013 and 2014 that bucked the trend when you see guys all of a sudden have a five or six shot lead before the other wave is starting on Friday, 17 years is a pretty good sample size. That, that spans different weather, that spans March versus May. There's a lot of different variables involved that we've seen this trend play out. So maybe there is something to be said for going out early, post the number, then see how the course plays up before you go out Friday afternoon. Uh, not to go too far ahead, Chris, in the, in the, uh, the show run here, but I am concerned by how many of the players that we like from a statistical standpoint are in the late early wave. That could be a problem. Maybe we were going to be rooting for the trend to go the other way because a lot of the players that are on our short list for Team Golf Bet are going to be out late early. We'll have to see how You're goes. shaking your head, Ben. You don't agree. Yeah, I think it's an anomaly. Honestly, I, I think it's just one of those things, especially since we have, we've changed back to March, like I said earlier. I don't think it's much of, as much of a big deal. Uh, Look, we've also got a really stacked afternoon, which we might not have had in the last three or four years. Most of the big guns were going off early in the last few years. This year we put them in the back. I think that the quality of player might change the trend. If we're talking about a rookie or a guy who hasn't won a big event, then maybe they're coming out on Thursday afternoon feeling like they're chasing a number. But I don't think Scheffler, Thomas, these type of guys that are starting the afternoon are sitting there worried about, oh, there's an eight under on the board. Oh, there's a six under on the board. They're just going out and playing their own game and I think they can buck the trend in that. Now, if it's a, a rookie or someone who hasn't played well here before, maybe they do try to chase. That's where they can get themselves in trouble around here. You're only one swing away from a double bogey. Uh, peak die, diabolical, of course. So yeah, that, that's where the trend could happen, but I think the quality of player in the afternoon might buck that trend. Although all the Aussies are in the morning, I think. <laughs> Jason Day, Adam Scott, Minwoo Lee, all in the morning, good news. All right, I want to talk about another trend that, that we might be looking to buck, and I'll go to Matt as uh, Team Shuffler apologist here. <laughs> No defending champion has been worth a, a hill of beans at this tournament Here we go. going back to 
really the last 20 years. Adam Scott, T8 back in 2005. Uh, ben, you might know him, but <laughs> what is it, Matt, about that trend and, and how does that pretend for what Scotty Scheffler might do this week, looking to defend the title, coming off a win last week at Bay Hill, but historically, this is just a tournament where the defending champ always seems to struggle. We've never had a back-to-back -back winner. Yeah, I mean, I feel like every week this happens, Scotty does something, and then we see stats that only Tiger Woods has done or only someone else has done. So that stat doesn't really scare me this week. I think it's something that is notable, but it's also something that we're realizing Scotty Scheffler is one of his own. He's absolutely unique. So it's a stat that he can absolutely overcome, and it wouldn't scare me this week that he well, think he can go back to back. Spoiler alert, let's get to our picks. Matt, start on the hot seat here. Long shot for you at the Players' Championship this week. Long shot I'm going to go with Sahith. Sahith Tagala, and the main reason I'm going with Sahith, not only because he's been playing well, this crowd is going to be 100% behind him. And it's kind of crazy to think about when we have all these big names on tour, Sahith Tagala always has the crowds with him. So if he's there on Saturday, even early Sunday, late Sunday, hopefully, there's going to be a ton of people supporting him. That's going to push him along. Scotty's not your winner. He's your top 10 yep. minus Boo. money. That's Boo. fine. Boo. <laughs> Boo. Flash it on screen there for you a minute. You can't suggest a plus five six hundred outright pre-tournament it's just one of those things it's cardinal sin you absolutely should not take someone that low of odds pre-tournament because it's golf and so much can happen but scotty can of course win this <laughs> your hot hand everybody's talking about justin thomas why is he your winner Justin Thomas is one of those guys that I think is very, very, very close. And what we saw at Bay Hill, he started to make a run on Sunday, and then he blew up the back nine. I think that's going to eat at him. And we have all this conversation about Scotty and Rory being at the top of the tour. JT wants to be at the top of the tour. He wants to be that guy that we're all talking about. So a fueled up JT, why would I not take him? All right, I'm going to go jump in here because I really do like Justin Thomas as well. I know we'll probably have a different graphic for an outright winner, but I've got Thomas in expert picks. I have to agree with Matty on that one. I think JT's primed. He's sort of showed some things. And I know he had a late fade at API, but that's, that's sort of the Thomas way. When he can't win, sort of might, might let it go a little bit. So I wouldn't read too much into those last few holes at Bay Hill. What I will say is he's won here before. He's in the top 10 in strokes gain tee to green, which is a huge factor this week. And he's good at par five scoring and hits it plenty long. Although he's come back to the field a little bit in length over the last few years. So JT's good. I also like some sneaky Will Zalatoris. Another guy who was very good last week until he wasn't, was right up there, finished second at the Genesis Invitational, which is a big deal. He's still coming off the injury, but I think he's shaking that off. And if you just take his stats from those two last signature events he's been in, he is way up there in everything that matters. This is the type of course that suits him. He's a ball striker. He can get it done. He only needs to putt half decent. He's been top 20 in putting in the last two signature events, as I mentioned. Watch out for Willie Z. I think he could do something. All right, I want to go back to the Justin Thomas thing for a second because we just talked about Scotty Scheffler. You can't bet him at this outright price, but you might want to look to him in a top finisher market. I go the other way with Justin Thomas. I agree with Ben and Matt. I think that there's a lot of upside for JT, but I would rather get him in the outright market in that plus 2200 range than go for a top five or a top 10 because if he's in the mix, he has a better than average chance of converting that into a victory as we saw back in 2021, as we've seen so many times in his career. He's where, a killer. Yeah, he's, a, he's a killer, yeah. So if he gets in the mix, I think he has a good chance to convert as opposed to someone that's going to hang out in that T7, T8 range. There's going to be some volatility with Justin Thomas. He has, you know, a 75 in him, as do mm -hmm. every player yeah. in the field at this sort of course, given the conditions. But if he's able to piece it together, if he figures out the driver a little bit better than he did over the weekend at Bay Hill, JT could definitely be in the mix. Well, you know who else has a 75 in him? Somebody who has not played well here, Ben, and you did a lot of research yeah. on your best bet. Yeah, look, best bet. I like Tony Finau, of all people, for a top 20. I think you get plus 180 or so. Plus 400 or more for a top 10 if you want to get a bit more extravagant. But every stat I looked up, whether it was tee to green, approach, off the tee, par 5 scoring, greens in regulation, all the things that the last three big-time winners have had here, all of a sudden, Tony Finau's name just kept popping up, popping up, popping up. And like, he's also had a couple of good results on tour the last few weeks. I think three out of his last four are top 20s. Last year, he was T19 here. Maybe the trend's turned around for Tony Finau. And I said, I just can't leave it alone, given that on my metrics, he was there everywhere. So I like that. Can I go to my long shot? You have to go to your long shot. He's day. cooking. He's going to cook. <laughs> Min Woo Lee, the Aussie, is another great pick there at plus 5,000. Just sneaks into the long shot range. Jason Day there as well. Adam Scott not far behind. <laughs> the three Aussies. Obviously, this is an Australian paradise here. Steve Elkington, Adam Scott, Jason Day. The guys have all won here. They all do really well. Um, it, it kind of feels like a, a home course for them when it gets a little harder and faster. 
And Min Woo, he was the only guy that really took it to Scheffler last year. Yep. In the final round, he sort of creeped up on him, he was there. The crowd was actually with him, which was amazing to see that the Australian got the crowd, because Scheffler's a bit down, down plays things a bit, not as exciting. They got right behind Min Woo. That got him a little spooked, he made a few mistakes, faded a little. He's grown in the last 12 months. I think he loves the crowd, he feeds off that energy. Min Woo is a great, Great, great long shot, especially with an early tee time. <laughs> Public service announcement, Ben took the Aussies. Also, no shocker, all of them. All of them. you didn't take any of them. You're a long shot. Uh, yeah, so my long shot, again, is fitting the mold of, of Ben, of just sneaking in there at that plus 5,000 range. But Brian Harmon is a player that played well at this course before he had the Claret Jug sitting on his, his nightstand. Now he comes in as a different player in stature and, and a different player in perception in the field. I think he's still primed for a really big week. Only four players have made the cut every year since the move to March in 2019. Justin Thomas is one of them. Brian Harmon is another, in addition to the course record holder, Tom Hoagie and Denny McCarthy. I think Brian Harmon's game fits this course to a T. He's coming off of some momentum at Bay Hill after some strong play last week. And I really think that at plus 5,000, we could see him in that 10, 20 range by the time you get to the weekend. You're going to get the award for most interesting best bet because you had to go really deep in the archives on the outsports to find this one. Uh, we're in March, so it's, it's you know, hoop season, and an old adage a friend of mine, Alan Robinson at Golf Channel, always used to say is that Ball State tickets cash the same as Notre Dame. You can <laughs> just go in and you can find value wherever they are. Winners are winners. I think we've got a winner this week in Eric Van Royen, plus 130, top South African. That is a three-way market with Garrick Higo and Christian Bezadenhout. I really think that Van Royen, EVR, is in a good position to play well this week. He has come up and, and really leveled up his game since that win last year in Mexico. He has started off really strong in the spring on the PGA Tour in a three-man market. I'm getting plus money, Chris. I think that's a winner. Who's one guy that we haven't talked about yet that you can guess is his winner that everybody's talking about, though? Everybody. Hideki Matsuyama? Winner! There you go. Winner. Oh <laughs> your Hideki. unofficial, your yeah. unofficial 2020 Players Champion. Shot a 63 yeah. <laughs> uh, before the world paused. But listen, Hideki, we saw what he did Sunday at Riviera, shooting a 62 to win a loaded field and a signature event at the Genesis Invitational. He has played well here for a really good run. Five out of the last top eight have gone for top 25s, including three top eight finishes. And he, he tends to win in spurts. When he gets one, he usually adds another one in quick succession. Wouldn't surprise me at all to see Hideki in that. Again, you're getting so many players in the 20, 25, 30 to 1 range that you're used to seeing at maybe 10 or 15 to 1 at some similar fields. That just shows how deep this field is, how unpredictable the golf course is. And I think there are a lot of candidates in that 20 to 30 to 1 window that you could grab a ticket on Wednesday and feel really good about it come Saturday. Yeah, well, I mean, we love we love Scheffler. Obviously, he's a great player. But is he five times better player than these guys? That's, that's the key. We're talking odds here. You're getting much better value elsewhere. Yes, Scotty Scheffler could win this wire to wire, but you're not getting the value because of what can go wrong. Hideki has been in great form. I've got him in my place market. I think it's a great call, Will. I think he's a good, really good chance. Now, if you're looking at Scotty, though, and you do want value, you're asking all these people, everybody wants Scotty, right? How do you bet Scotty this week? First round leader and see what happens from would there. Would you take him negative money like you would have to in a top 10? You would have to. I say wait. You I say it. wait. Yeah. I say wait. I say wait for a live bet. We, people forget you can live bet the PGA <laughs> Tour out there. You can live bet it. Yeah. So wait and see what happens with such a short price rate. Maybe Scotty is five back after day one, and all of a sudden he's 10, Maybe 11. He's that, yeah. yeah. Well, look at, let's just look at last week. Yeah. He, was, he had a longer price on Friday, yeah. entering the second round at Bay Hill, than he did pre-tournament. He went from plus yeah. 750 out to plus 800. He was trailing by four. It went even higher than that in the live markets before we got around to Saturday. He's got to share the lead and he's down to plus one. And if he does go out and go lights out in the morning and we miss it, well, that happens sometimes. Then you start looking at the other cool fun markets we're going to have this week. Uh, I don't want to get ahead of us, but we've got some pretty good ones, right, Chris? We got the hole in one on 17 okay. coming up. It'll be on our social media all week long. Before my picks here, I need a Maddie Splinters and Benny Betts <laughs> debate here. Uh, Max Homa, killer or not a killer? Max Home is absolutely a killer, and if you debate that, I'm going to be shocked. And I don't think you will debate that because you've learned your lesson last time with Scotty. <laughs> he's Max a winner, Ben. I, I like Max Homer this week. I actually think if he's going to win something big before a major, it might be a player's. He, he does factor into to consideration here this week. He has not done anything in major championships to this point. In fact, has been pretty bad in major championships at this point. So to take the next lever, level, level up, he's going to have to perform on the big stage. This is a good spot to start. He's been in the top. 15 the last few years here, 
So he could be one to watch this. I think that's something that just motivates him even more, though. He knows that he was bad in majors. He knows that he's on the rise, and he's been playing better golf the last year. So he knows he needs to perform in the majors, big events, players. I think that's something that he's going to motivate and push him for. He talks about it, and yeah. he said, yeah. but he said he's he's talked about it too much. He's internalized it too much. It's made it's it's been a problem for him. He struggled with that. He struggled with the intensity change, and he struggled with trying too hard. Once he figures that out. Once he can just be normal, Max, like he is, probably, you know what, I, if you were doing a Monday afternoon skins game with your mates, you would want no one else but a Max Homo. Or even though at the, the match, eh, he wasn't that good, I think with his buddies, yeah. he'd, be the, he'd be the perfect like that. he's going to figure it out sooner than later. At some point, we'll see. At some point? Yeah. Well, I would, listen, I would just like it noted that I had Max Homa as my top pick last week at Bay Hill. Everyone here just raised an eyebrow and said, what? Are we sure about that? He sure. finished T8, played pretty well, didn't contend, but now all of a sudden Max Home is a killer. Max <laughs> Home is an outright pick. So I was ahead of the curve and now he'll cash tickets for someone else. But just before we go yeah. off that, everybody was on a guy last week that missed the cut. Yeah. Are we forgetting him because of that? Are we Matt, uh, Fitzpatrick. Matt Fitzpatrick? Is Matt Fitzpatrick a chance here? We've all gone off him, even though we all had great reasons to be on him last week, all of a sudden he's no good. What are we thinking? Is he your Scheffler late? Is that what you're saying? Uh, I think he's a great long shot as well. I think he's 66 or something to one. Look, I know no Englishman has won here, right? Like right. The, they've struggled. You have to beat that. But I think just to dismiss him because of one missed cut, when we're also gung ho on him a week ago, might be a little bit dangerous. We'll see. I would also point out we've gone a long time talking about a lot of players. There's only one player within shouting distance of Scotty Scheffler on the pre-tournament yeah. outright board. Which is we nuts. have not set his name. Nope. Rory McIlroy. Boys, what do we think about Rory? Nope, not buying Rory this week. I'm not buying it. Uh, I really don't have a good reason. I just don't think he's <laughs> going to win it this week. And I think it's just something that I feel. And sometimes when we gamble and we do these bets, you got to go with your heart. And I just don't see Rory winning it this week. I'll give you a reason. I think he's just got one too many foul balls in him, right? Yeah, like, okay. So I think that that's a problem when you're not hitting it as well. And one bad swing, as I said, can end up in the water or in a really bad result here. You're going to have a few double bogeys. Can he recover from those if he has them? I beg to think that he can't. You know, there are just going to be too many mistakes in his game for him to overcome, especially if the ball strikers out there, like we've talked about, Scheffler, Zalatoris, Hideki, etc., are on point. That's a lot of ground to make yeah. up. We've had way too much time talking. If you want to see my long shot and my best bet, go to our website, <laughs> oh, Expert on, Picks. You want to get to it? Yes. Okay, well, I flashed Justin Rose on the screen here at plus 9,000. Wow. Let me make that a chance for us to dive deep into the strokes gain stats, Will, and the fact that Justin, Thomas, or Justin Rose is third uh, on this board yeah. of everybody on this field, strokes gained per round. But, Will, there's some interesting guys right around him, too, we haven't talked about yet. Yeah, for sure. And, again, we went through this yesterday in the key stats, and that was a name that popped. You're not really thinking about Justin Rose around here at TPC Sawgrass. You mentioned Max Homa. Tom Hoagie. Tom Hoagie, the course record holder, for sure, after the 62 last year in round three. So he's someone that's going to be in the mix. But but talk me through Jay Rose here. Chris, what's your, what are your thoughts? I mean, it's the fact that Justin Rose, you write him off, right? Yeah. I mean, he's Aubrey he's older on tour. Compare, I mean, compare him to everybody else. He's older here, right? Yeah. You write him off, but look what he's done the last handful of years. Yeah. Of course, he plays well at Pebble Beach. Let's throw out Pebble Beach. But even then, he contends randomly. He hasn't played bad this year, guys. Yeah. Yeah. He plays well here in general. Yeah. Take him, why not, plus 9,000. That's my long shot. And then best bets, I mean, you could go literally anywhere in the world on this. I went Hideki. We don't got to talk more on Hideki because he doesn't need to win. I mean, who here does not think that Hideki Matsuyama will not be talked about at some point on Sunday? Yeah, yeah he'll yeah. be in the I agree, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We, all agree. we all agree. Kiss of death. That. Sorry, Hideki. Yeah. Yeah. Hideki's gone! Uh, <laughs> go on! Bye, Hideki. It was good seeing you. Too much fun here. All four of us getting together. It is a serious treat. Very rare. Chris Priest, Will, Will Gray, Ben Everill, and Matt Del Vecchio here on the Roundtable for Golf Day.